we are going to go to Sarah here. You are up first, Sarah. Hello. Hey, Bart. Good afternoon. How are you? Pretty good. How's it going? Very good. Thank you for having me on. Where are you from? You sound a little bit Southern or something. Yeah, everybody says that, but I'm actually from Kansas City. Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> Midwest, Midwest. Kind of, it depends. Yeah, if you're from the North, I guess it's Southern, but around here, it's a pretty, I guess, modest accent. So. I, lo- I love Kansas City. I got a buddy in Overland. I, lo- I got a buddy in Overland Park. My wife and I looked to possibly even move there, but it was just a little bit too cold and hot in the summertime. You got a hand for us, and where is it played out of? Is it played I out of Kansas do. City? Uh, it's actually over at Hollywood, right on the Kansas side. Yep, I've been there. So one three no limit, um, and we are nine handed. Um, I'm actually I'm the big stack at the table. I have nine fifty in front of me. Um, okay. And just as a side note, I guess like I usually buy in for three hundred, and so like to have a stack of nine fifty isn't like a super familiar for me. It's not usually me who's the big stack at the table. Um, but anyways, um, we are playing. Like I said, one three nine handed. I got nine fifty. Um, and preflop, there is a $6 button straddle on. Okay. The small blind limps, big blind, flats, low jack, flats, high jack, flats, and then I am in the cutoff. Mm-hmm. Um, I look down at the queen of spades and the queen of hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get with four limpers and the straddle on, I decide to raise it up to 45 bucks. Okay. The button, small blind, and low jack all come along. So the button... Small blind and the low jack call. So I'm just going to do this back. It sounds like it's the same setup from what I am accustomed to with a button straddle going in order. So you've got four limpers ahead of you. Blinds going first, right? $6. Gets over to you. You make it 45 in the cutoff with queen, queen. Um, you said you were 950. I have 950 effective. It's probably going to be a, a varying amount of stacks. What is the normal raise size in this game with like no limpers? Is it like 15, something like that? Yeah, exactly. So like if there's no straddle, it's anywhere from like 12 to 15 with the straddle. It had been like 15 to 20. And so that's why I did like 20 plus the four limpers at 24 bucks. So that's why I went to 20. Or yeah. That's why I went to 45. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think I made it, made, might have made it 45. I, with, I forgot when I asked you that, I forgot that there was a straddle because here's the thing. Like if it's a straddle to six, I mean, 20 is OK. Let's say people open to 20, but you got to add I think like the three limps on top of that, like in front of where you would have opened to 20. So I probably would have made it. I mean, well, I mean, I guess you add, so if you say you made it 20, you added three limpers on top. So yeah. Yeah. 30. I mean, I guess it's not quite that. I I probably, yeah. I think people in the chat are getting on you a little bit. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, you made it basically seven and a half X, right? Pretty much. Like, yeah. I, mean, I was thinking six dollar straddle, three X is like anywhere like three to four X is yeah. eighteen to twenty four yep. yep. plus the four limpers. So Yeah, I don't think it yeah. I mean it's a here's the other thing too. Um I think if everybody is sort of short, say all these guys are like say like three hundred or less, right? Let's say they're fairly short, then I think the smaller you can make it. You know what I mean? Like the smaller you can make it, the more you want to get value from your hands because you don't have to For sure. uh, get money in. So all right, so three people call. So you got yeah. now pots like maybe 190 or something with the uh, limpers? Yeah, 192 is okay. what I calculated okay. out. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, with the stack sizes too, I mean, like the actual two villains in this hand had roughly 500 and 700. So, I mean, it was like a bigger game in general. Um, but there were some short stacks that only had like 150 to 200 in front of them. So it just kind of varies. Yeah, there you um, go. I mean, that's why I said that's a case for making it smaller. I mean, for sure. For sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, the flop comes um, four of spades. Six of spades and the queen of diamonds. Four of spades, six of spades, queen of diamonds. So you flop top set. Yep. That's pretty good. And you have the queen of spades too, huh? Exactly. Wow. That, that was my thought. So yep. I, I guess like thinking here, I'm like, okay, I want to charge the spade draws, but like, I mean, I basically flop the world. I don't want to scare anybody off here either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, it, it small blind and low jack check to me. Mm-hmm. And I decided to see bet for $75, roughly around a third pot. I think I, so... Again, I mean, just trying to visualize you. So the villains in in your hand have like about 300 left. Is that what? So let me see here. Um, So the button actually had like 750. Okay. And then the small blonde roughly around 500. Okay. So I'm going to just put this up here. So the button's got 750 because what I was going to say is just for example, say everybody had like 300 going in the flop or say less than 400, which is like two pot size bets. You do not need to bet this much. Um, because if you went 75 in a call, now all of a sudden the pot's going to be like 340 and the guys are going to have, you're going to have one pot size back moving 
to the turn, which is very, very easy to get, you know, all the money. And now the button's got 750. Now he's in the worst spot in the sense that he's going to be next to act. You block all the top pairs. I still probably would go like maybe 60, 65. It's just a little bit subtle, but if the deeper the stacks, I would say, yeah, um, you don't need to take a disproportionately sort of okay. small size. This is a pretty good board for you to see bet. But with that being said, you really shouldn't be C bet bluffing here into like that many opponents. You know, someone asked me an interesting question on the regular flagship podcast a while back, and they're like, when you play at a table with a bunch of fish, but then there's one or two other good players. How do you play against the good players? And I said, you know, that's a really hard one because you are sometimes forced to play straight up where it's easier for you to play against the good players. And it's easier for them to play against you because when you're betting into five people and I'm a good player next to act, and I know you're a good player, I know you're not bluffing, but it's still, is going to show the most EV to get money from the bad player. So Sure. Um, just a little bit of a digression, but okay. So hero bet yeah, 75. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so the button like snap calls. Didn't Interesting. Okay. It. So the deep stack calls. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He calls small mm -hmm. blind, same thing. She calls pretty quickly mm -hmm. and then the low jack gets out of the way. So low jack fold. So you get action here from two people. So now it looks like the pot is going to be yeah, like four seventeen is what I've got. Okay. And then the guy on the button's going to have like, you know, 700 ish or a little under 700 ish left. And the small blind girl has what, like 220 to something like that, 225, right? Um, you said she had 300? No, because she started with 500. So. Oh, okay. So she's more. Okay. So you get some, yeah, you get yeah. some money. Yeah. So she's okay, got, cool. I think, yeah, she's got like roughly 350 left at this point. Yeah. And then the small blind, or excuse me, the button more around 500 yeah. or so, something like that. Yep. Um, so anyways, uh, the turn comes down, the 10 of clubs. Okay. So first of all, what do you think these people can have, number one, just really quickly? I mean, off the top of my head, I'm putting one of them on, I mean, on, on a flush draw. Okay, like, that's logical. The nut flush draw mm -hmm. is like the easy thing to put somebody on. Any flush draw, I think. In this yeah, game. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think it would be, I mean, I suppose the button could have like a 4-6 suited, like some two pair or something. But then again, like it, it just strikes me as odd. And then... I mean, a queen X, obviously, I block so much of that, but sure. it's possible to have a queen X. I was just going to say, Sarah, how many queens are there in the deck? Oh, exactly. There's four, yeah. right? And people love to play off, but people love to play offsuit Broadways. 100%. So yeah. I'm thinking, you know, like mm -hmm. a queen jack or something like that. Yeah. And then the thing is, is that like at low stakes games, you will find people call and over call with middling types of hands that they're not supposed to like six. Yep. That, like that the, was the next thing I was going to say. Maybe pocket eights or pocket nines were kind of what yeah, I was thinking. So for example, like the button, I think when you bet in here, when he's next to act should never really, he should really only have a queen plus here or a draw. He should not be calling with eights or nines should not be calling with five, six suited with two people behind him. Now he could closing the action, right? But sure. he shouldn't, but you'll find that they are. So there, there could be some yeah. of those hands here too. Okay, so the turn for the ten sure. of clubs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, with two people calling, I just – I guess I was really suspicious of a flush draw at this point. And so I – the small blind checks to me, mm -hmm. and I decided to bet half pot at $200 just to mainly charge the draws is kind of what I figured one of them was on. So you decided to go 200 here, which means that if you get called, the pot will be like – 800 and then the button if i'm doing the sort of math correctly we'll have about 500 left and then you know the small blind will have about 200 left you know usually the half pot size isn't really taken all that much but in this particular case it might not all be that bad if you're really scoping out what you think is a good um sort of sizing to get all the money in. if you think the button might have queen x and possibly might just actually sort of stack off i mean it'd have to be really bad um, right. I, I think you might even be able to go slightly larger here to maybe okay. 200 to 225, um, sure. in this spot, but yeah. yeah, I could see that. I also think like just with low stakes, like to me, 200, like, I don't think a lot of times people think of bets and like, you know, in proportion to the pot size and all honesty and low stakes, I feel like people just see the number of 200 and think, oh my God, that's a big bet. And so I think are you, I kinda, are, are you a website subscriber? Uh, CLP yes. websites. Okay. So yeah. I, I, well, I wonder, no, I was just wondering where you heard that from. No, I, I guess it's just more of a general observation no. to be honest with you. Okay. I think people just well, throw money out there. I don't really think. Well, I think that you are general, right on. I think you're right online, Sarah, because I've been saying that for years. That's one of the small stakes exploits. That's why I was wondering if you're getting it from material. Absolutely. At these levels, it's more of a um, function of the amount that is bet and the smaller the pot, 
the more inconsequential the bet size is in terms of a percentage. And right. also, too, the larger the pot, it's the same thing, but the opposite way. Meaning if somebody bets, say, 30 into 30, you don't look at that as like a 100% pot size exactly. bet. It's just That's 30. That's just like a normal C bet. Yeah. But if somebody bets like 500 into 1,000 – that's a big bet, right? At that exactly. level. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no matter what. Yeah. Okay. So Hero bets 200. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the button, I mean, this guy beats me into the pot. He snap calls. Okay. So button calls. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then literally right behind him, the snap, the small blind just rips it all in. For less, right? Can't, how much? No. So she had, she had 200. So like I said, she started the hand with 500 and she's called like 145 plus 75 right. at this point. So she's called like 120 at this point. Mm -hmm. So the dealers counted out and it's, it ended up to be like 340 total. Okay. So I'm so going to like plus 140. All right. So yeah. check rate. So small blind check rates all in for 340. I'm going to put 340 here and I'm going to assume that, that you're somewhat standard in rules where what I mean by that is it doesn't open the betting up. It needs to be 400 if you bet 200. It needs to be a full raise for you to have the option of three bet. Small blind check raise to 340. You with me, Sarah? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. So your only option is yeah, to call I can't here, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So hero that's calls true. and button calls. Is that right? Exactly. All right. So hero calls, button calls. So let's do some math here. We just put in like maybe like a thousand, uh, maybe uh 10 20 here on the turn so it looks like the pot is maybe 16 35 small blinds all in and the button has what like four or five hundred left something like that so and yeah he, so he had about 300 to 350 left and at this point wow. i'm around 500 less so i've got him covered by like right. 150 200 roughly button has about 350 to 400 okay and now the you're all in for uh, – there's a main pot of 1635. All right, let's go to the river. Yeah, well, and just like to point – interestingly too, like the way the button snap called me, before the dealer could even count out like how much extra it was, I guess, mm -hmm. like – I mean I hadn't even reacted and he was like actively stacking out chips on my left, the button was, like before I could, you know, even act. So he was very eager to call. By the um, way, by the way, Sarah, somebody in the live chat brings up a really good point. If you're very, very zoned in, and this is a weakness in my game, I always have trouble eyeing the eyeing someone stack perfectly. But if you were very zoned in, like you were playing online and all the stack sizes were accurate in front of you, you could actually bet 170 here. 170 is actually a better bet than 200. And of course, the reason for that is because if the small blind rips, you can three bet. Do you see what I'm saying? If the small blind had 340 and you bet 170 and the small blind rips, now now the action's open, right? I see. So, okay. I mean, it's very, that's kind of I a PLO saying, yeah. type of thing, and it's not something that you think about all the time. But, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, so 1635, and he's got 350 to 400 left, and okay, let's go to the river. So the eight of spades comes. Oh, well, yeah, how did exactly. we know, right? How did we know? I just know. <laughs> it, so in my gut, I'm like, I mean, I figured the small blind at this point, I'm like, maybe she's got like a queen 10 or – some worse set maybe or or the nut flush draw or something of that sort. So I kind of figured she might have it. And if she doesn't have a, a spade draw at this point, I'm like, the button's surely got one. So the pot is uh, 1435. Thank you, live chatters. I had said that wrong. 1435 and the guy's got 350 to 400 left. Oh, God, that sucks. I mean – So, yeah. I mean, I just know it in my heart at this point. I'm like, I just feel like I am likely not good. So I kind of just reluctantly check and he just yep. rips it all in. <sighs> I mean, uh, this is such a shitty spot because... He just, like, snap rips it, yeah. It's such a shitty spot because not only is he... Um, so hero checks and button all in. Um, you know, not only is he uh, betting into a dry side pot here. So he's all in, I'm going to say, like, maybe 375, something like that. So it looks like, you know, the pot's going to be, like, 1800, 375 for you to call. Yeah. You've got a couple of things going against you here. And then you have a couple of things going for you. What's going for you is you're getting incredible pot odds, right? It's 375 for 1800. So you're getting like, you know, five, six to one, something like that. The problem here is the button is betting into a dry side pot. It's really hard for him to bluff. By the way, five, seven comes in here too. You lose to that, which was open ended. 100%. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it would seem that someone has a flush draw here. There's a very good chance someone has a flush draw here. So even if the button was like, say, over about, let's say the button was slow playing a set of sixes to the end, right? If the small blind has a flush, you're not really gaining. I mean, you're gaining the call from the the, the all-in just on the side, but you're not going to win the entire pot. 
Exactly. Oh, this really, really sucks. I mean, yeah. <laughs> at this point, like when you're in, when you're at this level, and you have like a big hand, and you're getting extreme pot odds, I always say like, there isn't anything like wrong with calling. So I don't think anybody would fault you here. I don't think it's a huge mistake to call because of the pot odds. Now, if the button was a little bit deeper, say that a button had five hundred and the button moved all in for 500, then it really, really gets dicey. Put it this way. I can see a fold here if you're not getting extreme pot odds. If the button had a little bit more, this kind of sets up where we think he would probably raise at some point with some sort of made hand with this sort of dry board. You're really just praying for a scenario where the button is value betting something worse than your hand that was slow played off, and then you also have the small blind beat, which I find unlikely. In this case here, I might sort of toss in the call just because the pot is so big. You obviously have the queen of spades in your hand, which means it's actually less likely that your opponent has a flush. So you've got that thing going. If you want to choose like some pocket queens to call and some to fold, having the queen of spades is the one that you want to call because it's just, you know, it's just something sure. very subtle. So what yeah. ended up happening here? I, I mean, I thought about that, having the queen of spades, but I, I ended up just kind of reluctantly folding face up. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I just folded it face up and just kind of side. Oh, I, um, I don't know if I would fold it face up, though. I don't uh, know if I'd fold I it just, face up. Yeah, <laughs> it was more of just like a frustrated fold, I guess, and just showed what I folded. But Well, you get to see you to see the results, I, And right? I got to see the other cards. Uh -huh. So anyways, the small, the small blind turns over pocket tens. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Oh, no. And oh, then, no. And then the button turns over five seven of spades for the river straight flush. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Button has yeah. five seven of spades for yeah. a straight flush, which is rare. Remember, though, too, I, I think the other thing that you have going against you here, too, is the nature of the spade. Like, if it's the deuce of spades or if it's the eight of spades, that's different than if it's, like, say, the jack of spades, right? Because a couple of the open-ended straight draws come in here, too. For both players, by the way, like, if the small blind just was going with 5-7 or going with 5-3 and the river came a deuce or an eight, you lose to that, too. So, no, that's a, that's an interesting one. I think what you can take away from this, though, too, is um, maybe a little bit more preflop. You're right on with the, you know, talking about the nature of the bet sizing and what it means. But if you're really zoned in and if you play in a game like this where you're straddling a lot and there are a lot of short stacks, when you get into a situation multi-way, especially on the turn where you think you're one of your short stack opponent's responses is going to be ripping it, then you want to bet half or less their stat less than their stack so that you have the option to three bet when they That's if fair. they were to check rip it. Definitely makes sense. I definitely didn't think through that on the yeah, like no, on my absolutely. turn bet, I guess, you know. No, I appreciate but. the call, Sarah. Thank you very much. Anyways, so thanks Bart. Always um we love um female poker players that call in because obviously it's a you know ninety five percent men. If you see my YouTube analytics, ninety eight percent men <laughs> that watch this show.